A long, long time ago, there was a poor miller who had three sons. One day, the miller passed away, and his two eldest sons took everything that he had. The youngest son was left with nothing but a cat. He said, I have no place to live. I have no money to buy food. All I have is this cat. If I sell the cat, I will have money for some food. But what shall I do afterward? Having heard this, the cat said, Master, please do not sell me. I've helped your father many times before, and I can also help you now. Please, give me your boots and your hat, and you will see how useful I can be. Also, give me some of the carrots and grains you have. The miller's son was quite surprised, and he gave the cat what he was asking for. The puss put on the hat and boots and ran directly into the forest. There, he found a rabbit burrow and made a trap with the carrots he received from the miller's son. And very soon, he caught a rabbit. Find more songs and learning games for preschoolers in the Binky app. The Puss in Boots then headed to the king's palace. He gave the rabbit to the king and said, Your Majesty, please accept this rabbit as a gift from my master, the Marquis of Carabas. The king was very pleased with the gift. On the next day, the Puss in Boots went to a wheat field. There he set another trap this time with the grain he got from the miller's son. Quite soon, he caught a partridge and headed back to the king's palace once again. He presented the partridge to the king and said, Your Majesty, please accept this gift from the Marquis of Carabas. The king was very happy with his gesture and invited the Puss in Boots for a meal. During the meal, the Puss in Boots told the king about the large fields and beautiful castle that belonged to the Marquis of Carabas. He also heard that the king would go on a trip very soon. On his way back from the palace, the Puss in Boots passed by some fields where some farm workers were working. He told them, if anyone asks you who is the owner of these fields, please say that his name is the Marquis of Carabas. The farm workers agreed to do so. When the puss arrived back home, he said to the miller's son, You will be meeting the king today. Go to the river, take off your clothes, and jump into the water. <coughs> the young man was surprised, but he did as the puss said. The Puss in Boots took all his clothes and hid them behind a rock. When the king's carriage was passing by the river, the Puss went up to the king and said, Your Majesty, Marquis of Carabas was robbed and thrown into the river. He is drowning, please help him. The king ordered his guards to save the Marquis of Carabas and gave him his best clothes. The Marquis of Carabas was invited to join the king's carriage. When the carriage passed by the fields, the king asked the farm workers, Who is the owner of these fields? And the farm workers replied, The owner is the Marquis of Carabas, your majesty. The king was very glad to hear this. In the meantime, the puss ran ahead of the king's carriage. He rushed to the nearest castle, where a terrible ogre lived. The puss met the ogre, and he said, I came here because I have heard of your mighty powers to become anything you want, but I don't believe in it. The ogre got angry and instantly turned into a lion. Do you believe it now? He roared loudly. The smart puss pretended to be scared. Oh, I do believe now, but it is 
easy to become a big lion. I am sure you can never become a tiny little mouse. The ogre got even more angry and turned into a little mouse. And then the Puss in Boots quickly trapped him. When the king and the miller's son approached the castle, the Puss said, Welcome, your majesty. This is the castle of the Marquis of Carabas. Please feel at home here. After receiving such a warm welcome, the king was very pleased and offered the Marquis of Carabas to be his royal council and gave the puss the title of lord. Oh, by the way, I have heard of an ogre living here nearby. Do you know where he is now?